So I'm here inside of my app.svelte file, and I already have a Svelte project up and running. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off by creating an H1 with some text content. And if I save, we'll see it on the page. Now, if we want to style this H1 inside of this component, we can use a pair of style tags, and we can write CSS as we usually would. So I can target the H1, and for now, let's say color red. And when I save, you can see it's automatically updated on the page. And that's because we have hot module reloading, which Svelte gives us out of the box. So now the important thing to note about the style tags and the rules that we create inside of them is that these rules are going to be scoped to this particular component, app.svelte. So let's see what we mean by that. Let's create another file, and we'll call it child.svelte. And let's make some room on the screen. And now in child.svelte, I also created an h1. And here, let's just say child. Now, in order to see it on the page, we have to actually import it into the parent component, which is app.svelte. So I'm going to go up to the top, make some script tags. And I'm going to say import child from child.svelte. And now let's put it on the page. Let's put it after the h1. And we can do so like this. And there we go, we see it, but notice that it still has the default black color. So we can see that this is scoped to this particular file. In other words, it's sort of sandboxed off from the child components. It's not gonna bleed down or cascade into the child components. And that way, for example, in the child component, I can create some style tags in here as well. And I can now target the H1 just inside of the child component. So let's say we'll color that Fuchsia. And basically the way that Svelte is doing this, if we look inside of our console, let's go to the Elements tab, and let's find these elements. And you can see that each one of them is given this class with this jumble of letters. And that automatically happens behind the scenes. And that's what's creating the scoping, the fact that each one of these is given their own unique random class. But let's comment out this h1 in the child component. And let's say that from app.svelte, the parent component, we did want to have this color red bleed down into the child. Well, Svelte gives us a global modifier. And we use it like this. We put a colon and the word global, and then wrap the element in parentheses. And now when we save, we see both of the elements are getting that color red. So this is the global modifier. Now there's also another way that we can create global styles, and that's sort of the traditional approach, which is to create a global style sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. In my public folder, I'll call it global.css. And then let's go into our index.html file. Let's close this file explorer. So now in index.html, I can just link to that global style sheet with a link tag. And now, if I want to apply some global styles, for example, let's just do the body, and we'll make the background color, let's say, yellow. And now I have to save my index.html file as well. But here we see it updated in the page. So now the only issue with doing it in this way is that, say, for example, we wanted to change the value of one of our properties. So we'll set background color, let's say, to pink. And I'm going to save. And you can see that that hot module reloading isn't working for the CSS. We don't see the page get updated. So rather than linking to that global style sheet from the index.html file, let's do it a different way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this global.css file into my source folder. So it's here. So now in my app.svelte file, I'll come up into my script tags. And I'm going to import that style sheet. So let's go to the source folder, and let's get global.css. And as soon as I saved, we see the pink background color get applied. And now let's go ahead and try and change it. Let's make it orange. And if I save, we can see it does get updated now. Now here in app.svelte, I could also use an inline style for the h1. And so I could say, for example, style equals, and then we'll say color We'll do green, 
And when I save, you'll see that it overrides the red color. And that's just normal CSS behavior, right? An inline style is going to override anything inside of the style tags. But what if we actually wanted to make the value here something dynamic? Well, for that, we can use the style directive. And you do it like this. You say style, and then a colon, and then you put the name of the style property that you're interested in. So if we want to do color, we can say style, colon, color, equals, and then we will put a variable in here. So we haven't declared the variable yet, but let's call it my color. And then inside of the script tags, let's say my color is going to equal Let's make it yellow. And now you can see that the code creative gets updated to yellow. So the cool thing about doing it this way is we can set these values dynamically. For example, if I had a button, and I'll just say change color, and then let's make an on click handler here. Let's say on click equals, and we'll write a function. Let's say handle click. Well, let's write that function now. Function handle click. And when the button's clicked, we're just going to set my color to equal purple. And so now, of course, when we click on the button, the color is going to change dynamically to purple. Now, there's actually a shorthand that we can use here as well. So let's say that instead of calling the variable my color, we called it color. And in here, we set it to color as well. So now if I save, it goes back to yellow. But now since the name of the property is the same as the name of the variable, we can just totally get rid of this and use the shorthand like that, style colon color. And if I save, you see it still has the yellow applied. So I think it goes towards Felt's overall philosophy, which is to keep things terse and simple. Now, very similar to the style directive, we also have the class directive. So let's show how that works. First of all, let's clear up some things. Let's get rid of these variables and functions, get rid of this button. All right, so to use the class directive, what we're going to do is we're going to say class and then colon. And then here, we're going to put the name of the class, which we haven't created yet. But uh, let's do it now. Let's say it's going to be called tiny. And we're going to set this equal to a variable. We'll call the variable is tiny. So now let's create that variable. Let's say is tiny, and we'll set it equal first to true. So what this means is that if is tiny is true, then the class called tiny will be applied to this h1. So let's go ahead and create that class now. So we'll say dot tiny, and here let's uh, give it a very small tiny font size. Let's say six pixels. So now if we save, we can see that it gets really really small. If I go ahead and I flip this Boolean value to false, now you can see that it stays big. Just the same way as with the style directive, we also have a class directive shorthand. And so if the variable is the same name as the class, so let's say we call it tiny, and then in here we can just get rid of the equals is tiny. And now let's go ahead and we'll set tiny back to true so we can see it applied. And there you go. You can see this works. Just a nice shorthand way to do it. Oh, snap. So now a very common thing to do is to toggle the state of this class tiny. So to do that, we could make a button again. And let's just say toggle class. And then let's use the on directive. We'll say on click and set that equal to a function that we'll create in a second. And let's say it's going to be called handle click. Now we'll make the function function handle click. Inside the function, we'll just set tiny to equal the opposite of itself. All right. so now if we click the button, we can toggle that class on or off. And what if we wanted to set multiple classes using the class directive, or even for the style directive as well? Well, we could do it like this. We can just put another class colon, and let's just make up another class for this. Let's call it italic. And then let's make that class. And we'll set the font style to be italic. Now we have to make the variable, though, as well, right? So we can say let italic equal true. And here you can see, right, it's an italic now. 
So that's setting multiple classes or multiple styles on an element. So if you want to take your web development skills to the next level, check out the Code Creative Store for courses and free content. I'm going to leave a link for you in the description and the comment sections down below. Also, drop me a comment and let me know if you've tried Svelte yet or if you're planning on giving it a try. See you next time.